Hi everybody and welcome to my homestead. It's Christmas time. I love this time of year and I love to decorate with all my primitive Christmas decor. I love to decorate my mantle with the old and new. So stick around. I'm going to show you some easy and quick primitive ornaments. Homemade ornaments that you made just, just seem to mean so much more. Snuggle with me, Mr. Brown, and keep me warm. Don't squeeze me so tight, dear. I'm going to melt. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started with our ornaments. And here I've got a cup of just cinnamon. And the kids are going to love, they're going to love making this. I have got a tablespoon of ground cloves. And it's already smelling so good. And our next ingredient is I'm going to use pumpkin pie spice because that's what I've got. Now, if you got just a jar of cinnamon, but I've got pumpkin pie spice, so that's what I'm going to use today. And I'm just going to give that a good stir. Just get all the dry ingredients mixed up pretty good. You talk about smelling like Christmas. And just think your tree's going to smell like this. Your house is going to smell good, that's for sure. And I've got three-fourths cup of applesauce. And this is going to be your... Because see, there's no flour in this recipe. But this is going to be one of your binders, is the applesauce. Three-fourths cup. And then, the last ingredient is two tablespoons of Elmer's glue. So, we all know that these gingerbread men are not edible. So there's two tablespoons of glue. Now all you gotta do now is just uh, stir it up good. Just get it all combined really good and it'll all come together. It looks really dry but it's gonna eventually just all come together and when you get done stirring it, it's going to look like cookie dough. About the consistency of cookie dough, like chocolate fudge cookie dough is what it's going to look like. So see it's coming together real good. Just keep it stirring. It won't take very long. This is so much fun. And besides that, like I said, it just smells so good. So it's a fun thing to do, especially with kids. And these ornaments, it takes about two days for them to dry. But you'll be able to use these ornaments next year too. Okay, we're not gonna use flour to roll, pat our dough out. We're gonna use a little bit of cinnamon. Just sprinkle your cinnamon on your dough board or on your your table, whatever you're using, just like you would flour, and just kind of spread it out a little bit. And then get your your dough, and just handle it like you would um, cookie dough. Just gather it up in your hands and just kind of pat it out. Now, at this point, you can, yeah, you know, just turn it over. I'm gonna turn it over and just put a little bit more cinnamon on both sides. And I'm gonna half it. And then I'm going to half it again, and I'm going to make four balls. And then I'm going to roll these balls out, and I'm going to make, I'll make the gingerbread probably about a fourth of an inch thick. And if you want a little bit thicker than that, you can. Now you can either roll them out with your little roller, or you can pat them out by hand. And sometimes it's easier just to pat it out by hand. It works either way. And the thing about this, these kind of ornaments, because they're primitive and that's the way I want them to look, they don't have to come out perfect. So you can have fun. And like I said, the kids will have a lot of fun with it too. So I sprinkled a little bit more cinnamon over the top. And I've got a little gingerbread man cookie cutter. And I'm just gonna cut some out real quick. And I'm gonna put them on my rack over here. And uh, I'm gonna let them dry on that rack for about two days. 
Look at these cute little gingerbread. And I got them cut out as many as I could out of that one ball, and I'm going to put them on this rack. So to go along with my other primitive Christmas tree decorations, I want to make some little primitive hearts. And I had this, this was a black gingham tablecloth that I had for years and it was all stained up. But I went ahead and kept it because I knew I'd, I'd use the material for something. So. And you know your hearts, for it to be primitive and look homemade, your hearts don't have to be perfect. They can be a little lopsided. That's the one good thing about primitive decor. Everything, nothing's perfect about it. I got me some buttons. I'm going to put some buttons randomly on, on them. Kind of give them that look. And I also got some stuffing. Now you can use batting or whatever you've got. I've got all kinds of stuff left from quilt, quilting. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the inside to, to uh, give it some, where, you know, where it'll stand out and be kind of puffy. It won't, because if you just sew your, your two pieces of material without anything, batting or something in the middle, it's just going to be real limber, you know, it's not going to be much of a something to hang on the tree. So it really needs something, batting or stuffing or something in the middle. But I love the primitive look, and I love the little primitive hearts. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I want to show y'all how I, I cut, I made me a pattern. I just had me a little piece of cardboard. And pretty much what I've done is I drew one side and I cut it out. And then I just flipped it over and cut the other side. So you got a heart. And, oops, let's see if I'm putting this together right. There we go. You got a heart. And if you ever noticed, if you cut a heart in half, you get angel wings. But anyways, I take one side, and I take my material, and I fold it on the, I fold it once, because what you want to do is put your, your template on the fold to cut it out. Now what that'll do is that'll give you two, that'll give you the front and the back. And it'll come out just like this one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it one more time and put it on the fold. And that'll give me two hearts to cut out at once. So you just set your pattern and you just cut around your pattern on the fold. Just like that. So let's get started. So all I'm doing is going right down the side with just a loop stitch. And you want it to look, if you got it too precise and too, too neat, it's not going to look as primitive. So every once in a while down through there I'll do a cross stitch. But you'll just do this all the way down, and then you'll leave um, a little hole somewhere to put some stuffing in it, and then you'll sew the hole up. So I'm going to finish with my little stitches here. And like I said, they don't need to be perfect, because you're defeating your whole purpose of your prim decor. 
And of course, you don't have to worry about nothing I'm doing being perfect. You want it to look rough and you want it to look handmade. So I'm going to finish this one till I get to the point of stuffing it and then I'll show you how to do that. Now I've gotten it stitched around the, the edges and I stitched it from up to this point right here. So I've got a hole from here to here that I'm going to take some of my stuffing, batting or whatever you've got. You don't need a whole lot. I'm just kind of push it in there you don't want it real fat like a pillow you just want it to have some kind of a filler to it so I'm gonna put just a little bit more and that's what that's what I love about making primitive decor because you can just go with it and not have to be so precise because you know things that were made back when and you'll find them in flea markets and stuff and they're not perfect because they're so worn and old and that's what makes them so beautiful to me that's why I love the prim decor the the old look, the, it's just what I like. Now, to me, this is planning. I'm going to have to put a little bit more for this side before I finish stitching, stitching it up. Like I said, you don't want to put too much unless you want it really big, fat, stuffed, hard. And that's not what I'm looking for. I snug a little bit of body to it. And this is such an easy, easy thing to do. You do this with your daughters, your sons, as long as they're old enough to, um, you know, be able to use a needle because it is sharp. So, I feel like that's enough. So, I'm going to finish stitching this up, and I'm just going to continue stitching it to the outside. Usually, you know, when you stitch something, you would stitch it to the inside, then you'd, you'd turn it inside out, and then you'd stitch it, then you'd turn it back. But, for this kind of decor, you want the stitching to show. That's just part of it. So I'm going to finish stitching this little heart up, and then we'll put a few little buttons on it. Okay, we got our little primitive heart stitched up. And you can see, putting just a little bit of stuffing in it. Just really filled it out a little bit. You can see it's not real fat, not real thick, because you don't want it too big, too heavy. So now... I want to find some buttons to put on here. I need something that's going to stand out. And you just want to put it on there randomly. You don't want to just have to overthink it. So we're going to sew this little button on. It won't take long. And you can put as many buttons on it as you want. I just like it simple. And it hasn't taken very long just to make this one little ornament. And I've got several to do to put on my little primitive tree. So there's the first one. And here's a red button. I think will look good. It'll stand out. I might put it up here in this corner. There's your sweet little primitive heart 
I think it turned out pretty good and it was easy peasy, nothing to it. Anybody can do it, just as long as you're able to work with a needle. Now the other, only other thing I want to do is I'm going to come up here and make me a loop so I'll have something to uh, hang it on the tree with. So I'm just going to come through here and put one stitch. And I'll come to the other side. And I want to loop it big enough. rocking hanging on the tree limb on the Christmas tree so there's my my loop-de-loop -loop. about that easy I'm just going to snip all my long pieces on the back So, there you have it, an easy little primitive heart. I'm going to finish these, and I've got several to do, and then I might start on something else. I've got my gingerbread men still curing, if that's what you want to call it. They're drying, and it takes a good two days for them to dry good. I'm going to get these done, and I'm seriously thinking about drying some apples and stringing those and hanging them on the, my little tree, because I remember back when that that's one of the things that we would do to hang on the trees, that, and we'd sit down and we'd pop popcorn, we'd eat popcorn, we'd string popcorn, but I don't think I'm going to string popcorn. I don't want to put too much on my little bitty primitive tree. So I'm going to get started on the rest of my hearts. And uh, I'll bring you back. And we'll dehydrate some apples to put on the tree. Now another primitive look for your tree will be dried fruit. And I just went through my refrigerator, and what I had was a few apples and a lemon. And they look so pretty when they're dried and hanging on a tree. So all you're going to do is just take your apple and be very careful. Don't cut your fingers. And I want round slices, so I'm going to cut them. I'm going to turn it on the side, and I'm going to cut them to the side so I get good round even pieces. Now you want to cut them thin so they'll dehydrate fairly well. So I'm just going to cut a few and be careful now. Don't let the kids do this part. I've got my lemons cut and I've got my apples cut and I've got them as thin as I can cut them. And I'm going to put them here in my dehydrator. Now, if y'all have a, a mandolin that cuts really thin, that's that's really the way to go. I've never bought one. I need to get one. Some of my slices didn't come out perfect. But we all know that's what rustic and primitive is about. Nothing's perfect. But I'm going to put these apple slices on. And then I'll put another tray on. And... Uh, put my lemons on there and I'll probably dehydrate them for I don't know probably on about I'll let them dehydrate all night for about 10 hours I'll probably let them go so if I put them on now by the time I get up go to work they, sh they should be done and to me there's nothing any prettier than dried fruit I'm not going to have time this year but I you can also string up popcorn with dried cranberries. 
that's really pretty too. Or just a, a long string of popcorn. We used to do that on Grandma's tree. And when the kids were younger, they're at the big farmhouse. When my kids were little, we'd string popcorn. And we always, always put the tree up Thanksgiving night. Good memories. Those of y'all that, that know me best know that I love primitive, and I love a primitive ki Christmas. Um, I don't put as much out as I used to, but, you know, with kids not here anymore, and, you know, the grandkids are here on the weekends sometimes, but you just don't tend to put as much out. But I still love decorating for Christmas. And y'all see my little Christmas tree. Now, don't make fun of it. I'm only, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a reason why I've got this little tree this year. Because I've got a cathedral ceiling up here, even in this small little cabin. We made sure our ceilings were open to give it a more open feel because we know if we put regular ceilings in, it really looked closed up. But I had a nine foot Christmas tree that I put up every year. But right now it's at school. We've got it up for the kids because uh, the kids enjoy the Christmas tree. In fact, we had it decorated for fall. We had a fall tree. And the, the kids and the teachers really enjoyed it. So that meant a lot to me. And uh, there's a lot of little kids that don't even get a Christmas tree. So I'm just going to leave it there, and I'm going to let the kids enjoy it this year. But anyways, I like my little primitive tree. It's little, but it's going to be pretty once I get all my homemade ornaments on it. And I've got a few lights on it, and I've got it stuck inside this this little bucket. And on this bucket it says Farmer's Market, and I really love this little bucket. I've had it for years. So I thought that was really cute. And, of course, I've got it set up here on this little stool just to give it some height. And it might would even look pretty if you had some kind of pretty little gingham or a, some kind of rustic-looking uh, cover to put over it. But... At this point, I think I'm just going to leave it like it is. I did paint this stool and kindly distressed it, so I like the way it looks. So anyways, I'm going to get started decorating my little tree with my homemade decorations. So I want y'all to stick around and let's see what it looks like when it gets done. So we've got everything here that we need to decorate the trees. I've got my dehydrated lemons, my dehydrated apples. I've got my little cinnamon applesauce gingerbread men who are the star of the Christmas tree this year. And I think they are so cute. And I'm telling y'all, they smell so good. It smells like Christmas. And I've even got my little, my little pigs here, my primitive pigs. They smell good too. They smell just like cinnamon. I've got my primitive hearts. I've even got some cookie cutters here that I'm going to hang some of them on the tree. And I've got my little, now I've had this little garland for years, and it's just a little rag garland that you, it's just pieces of material you cut in strips and you just tie them on a piece of twine or string or something, you make a garland out of it. And that's all that was, was leftover material. So I'm going to put that on the tree too. So let's get started on the tree. How to decorate your Christmas table simply but to look rustic and primitive and I like to layer so underneath I've got a, a quilt here that I bought at a flea market and it's hand stitched 
And I think I'd give $15 for this quilt. And it's just a little bit smaller than a twin size bed, so it fits this table pretty good. But underneath the quilt, I've got a real nice white type cloth. And it is long, so if you want to layer, you your first type of cloth needs to be pretty long because you want it longer than your top type of cloth. So what I've done is I catty cornered it, my bottom layer. Then I went and catty cornered the quilt this way so that the, the corners show. Now, if you want to just do it straight, you can do it that way. I just kind of like the way this looks. And I love this quilt. And what I do is I just go through the house and I find things that I know that I have that look primitive. And this is a, an old dough bow. It's really not an old one, it's probably a replica. And I've got this old white scale that I've had probably 20 something years. I had it at the old farmhouse. And I'm just going to sit it in there. And I've got some greenery that I think, I've had this for years, I think I just got it at the Dollar Store, or not the Dollar Store, probably Dollar General, years ago. And I'm just going to set that up there on the scale. And I have a little vase here with uh, paper whites. And you can see they're, they're, they're a coming up and hopefully around Christmas they're going to bloom for me and they're just in a vase as long as you keep water at least 75% water in there they'll do fine you see all the roots down there so they're doing good and I'm just going to set this in the middle and I'm hoping they bloom really pretty and I've got some Pine cones, different cup sizes. I'm just going to kind of throw them in front of the bowl. And I've got this, this little reindeer I think I got at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And I'm just going to kind of sit him in there. He'll stand up for me. And that's pretty much what I'll do for the, it's simple, it's pretty, and uh, it's primitive, and that's what I like. And I hope y'all like this video, and I hope y'all like primitive, and I hope y'all, y'all try your hand at making your homemade ornaments. It's really fun, and it's, it's just, uh, it makes you feel good to have ornaments on your tree that are handmade. Of course, if I still had my nine foot tree, I don't think I'd have enough ornaments, <laughs> handmade ornaments for them. I'd have to start back in July to do that. But just find stuff around your house. It don't have to be brand new. In fact, I'd rather have old stuff. I'd rather have stuff that's been handed down or stuff from a flea market or just anything like that handmade. I'd rather have that. And that's how you accomplish this look. So if y'all like this video, give me a thumbs up. I'm going to start doing some, uh, making my Christmas candy, cookies, and breads. And I'll have, that's where I'll start now, is my Christmas bacon and candy making. And I'll probably do that plumb up till Christmas. And then after Christmas, we'll get back to our regular routine for our regular videos. So y'all stayed tuned for the next videos of candy, cookies, just about anything that has to do with Christmas. So I hope y'all like this video. Give me a thumbs up, share it, and uh, God bless everybody and y'all come back and see me. Merry Christmas from Whippoorwill Holler.